It's time to get unstuck. Do you love listening to this podcast? I'd love to have you give me a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. And if you'd like to help me keep the lights on, I'd appreciate a donation. You can do that at livingmoonmeditation.com slash podcast. Are you tired of feeling stuck? Let's shift your energy. Start with my free quiz I made just for you. You'll get personalized tips for getting unstuck based on where your blocks are. You can find it at bit.ly slash get unstuck chakra quiz. I have the link in the show notes for you. May is meditation month, so that's what we're going to talk about this month in the next several episodes of this podcast. So I want to start with talking about how you can get started meditating if you're not already doing it. And the first thing is why you should start meditating. There are a huge number of advantages to meditation. It improves your health. It improves your mood. It helps you to sleep better. It can give you um, less stress. Well, it doesn't give you less stress, but it helps to decrease the stress levels that you already have. It helps to decrease your frustration and worry. Um, if you are feeling anxious or depressed, meditation can benefit you. Um, that's a lot of benefits right there, and there are a lot more. If I were to list every single benefit of meditation, we'd be here a while, and you'd probably get bored listening to just that. So that's an overview of benefits to meditation and why you might want to consider meditation adding it to your daily practice. And I say daily practice because that's the goal is to get to where you meditate daily, but start small and add it in weekly and see how that goes. Add it in a couple times a month, see how that goes. If you try to start out and say you're going to meditate every single day for 30 minutes a day, you're going to fail. And I'm just being honest with you. If you're starting from zero as a beginner, and you don't meditate at all, and then you set that goal that you're going to meditate half an hour a day every day, you're going to fail. That's just the way it is. So start small and build up to that goal. So it is a practice also, so keep that in mind. It's not something that you're ever going to master, but you continuously work on it throughout the rest of your life, and you will get better, and you'll get more and more benefit as you continue doing it. So that's just a brief overview right there of how meditation can help you, why you would want to start meditating, and some things to remember as you get started doing so. Now, you don't really need anything to meditate. You can do it with nothing. There are no tools required. You don't need... um, a cushion to sit on. You don't need a mat to sit on. You don't need anything. You already have everything that you need, which is your body and your mind and your desire to do it. So, yeah, it's really easy to do because you already have what you need to do it. The biggest concern that people have with starting meditating, from my experience working with my clients, is turning off the monkey mind, turning off all thought. Now, if you go into meditation with the idea that you're going to empty your mind of all thought, again, you're going to fail right there. You're not going to do it. And I've had a lot of my clients tell me that they can't meditate and they don't start a practice or they give up relatively quickly because of that because they get frustrated with the thoughts going through their mind. So the whole idea here with what I'm talking about as far as meditation is not to clear your mind. 
yes, there are forms of meditation where you can do that, but that's not what I'm going for here talking to you about, and that's not what I'm telling you you should be going for. So, what do you do with the thoughts in your mind? Nothing, really. They're going to come. That's what minds do. Minds think. And I think I mentioned that when I was talking to you in the last episode about daydreaming. I think I did, but if I didn't, anyway, that's what minds do. They think. And your ability to think and the fact that your mind keeps running thoughts through your head is a benefit to you. Everything that your body does or that your body is designed to do is a benefit to you. So, when these thoughts come to your mind as you're meditating, the goal is not to get rid of them. The goal is to not dwell on them. When a thought comes, our natural inclination is to take that thought, look at it, mull it over, and continue thinking about it and have an internal dialogue with ourself about that thought. But a thought is simply information. Think of it as a highway in your mind. Information is coming along and it's like a car. Your mind is the highway and the thought is a car. And that car comes along. Now you can make the car stop and you can focus on that car. Or you can just say in your mind, hey, there's a car as the car keeps on going by. That's the difference. If you stop the thought as it comes and you dwell on that thought and you think about that thought and you continuously keep focusing on that thought, then that thought is a stop car right there in your mind and it's going to stop traffic, right? So if you have a car that stops on the highway, it stops traffic. But if that car keeps going, then, you know, more cars keep coming and eventually rush hour is going to go and slow down and less cars are going to come by. So <clears throat> with that thought in mind, if you think of it like that, a thought is just information that comes through the highway of your mind. If you just let it go, thoughts are going to continuously come. If you let, if you have that thought or that information stop, then it's going to jam up your flow of meditation and other thoughts are going to just pile up behind it. But if you just notice that there's a thought and just watch it go on by, then other thoughts are going to flow by and you do the same thing with each piece of information that comes into your mind and eventually they're going to slow down. The rush hour of your mind is going to slow down and you'll start to notice that there are less and less thoughts in your mind. So, yeah, just do that. Just don't focus on the information as it floats by in your mind and just let it go. And that's what the goal here is with meditation in terms of what I'm talking about. Again, there are forms of meditation where, where you can completely and 100% empty your mind of all thought, but that's not what we're going for here. And you're not going to get there anytime soon from the beginner standpoint. So you may also think that when you sit to do meditation that you're going to fall asleep. And that is a valid argument a lot of times because, well, I don't so much anymore, but I used to have a lot of issues with sleeping. And so when I would sit down to meditate, I would fall asleep when my mind slowed down. I don't have that issue so much anymore simply because I don't have as much difficulty sleeping at night. But there are other forms of meditation. Meditation does not simply mean sitting on a cushion in the lotus position with your legs crossed and your fingers in that mudra chanting om as you empty your mind of thought. There are different forms of meditation. And if sitting meditation does not work for you, you can try something like walking meditation or 
standing meditation. There are different types of meditation and maybe sitting meditation is not for you. That's okay. You can find the type of meditation that works for you. What worked for me when I did have trouble staying awake while meditating was walking meditation where I would slowly and deliberately walk with a focused effort to go as slowly as I possibly could with each movement and each step. And that focused concentration on slowing down my walk would help to clear my mind and help the thoughts slow down. And then I was just looking at the ground in front of me and looking at my foot as it slowly moved forward. So that's one different way of meditating that may be of a benefit to you if you have trouble sitting and meditating or if you just find that you don't want to do that every day. If the thought of every meditation session being the same bothers you and frustrates you, that's a valid point too. So maybe find a different way to do it, whether it's silent meditation, guided meditation, yoga nidra, walking meditation, whatever. There are loads of different types of meditation. So find what works for you and swap it up if you need to. That's okay. So that is where I'm going to stop with this episode. Just a few things that hinder a lot of people when they're beginning meditation And it may be something that is a hindrance to you. One or all of those things may be a hindrance to you. Thinking you can't do it because you can't stop thinking. Or that you don't have what you need and can't get what you need to do it. Um, Or that you're going to fall asleep. Those are three common objections. Or why should you do it anyway? So four common objections that I just went over. That hopefully will help you see why you should consider adding meditation to your routine and how it doesn't have to be something intimidating. And next time we'll go further into some different aspects of meditation to continue this theme for the month. Since like I said, May is meditation month and I want to continue that theme throughout this month. But that's a way to get started And we will continue next time. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Get Unstuck with Michelle Leffler. It's truly been my pleasure to talk to you today. If you like this episode or you think it will be useful for someone else, please consider leaving a review on your favorite podcast app. If you've got any questions, send me an email to hello at livingmoonmeditation.com. Here's to getting you unstuck so you can be grounded, joyful, and energetic. See you next time.